12 days out from the election, and what is the message Donald Trump wants voters to take away from his campaign? We got a hint of it last night at Trump's rally in Georgia, where a fired Fox News host who now does stuff on his Twitter account described Trump as the father of the country, and he called on the crowd to vote Trump for vote for Trump because Tucker Carlson hates bad little girls. There has to be a point at which dad comes home. Yeah, that's right. Dad comes home. And he's pissed. Dad is pissed. He's not vengeful. He loves his children. Disobedient as they may be, he loves them. Because they're his children, they live in his house. But he's very disappointed in their behavior. And he's going to have to let them know. He's going to have to get to your room right now and think about what you did. And when dad gets home, you know what he says? You've been a bad girl. You've been a bad little girl and you're getting a vigorous spanking right now. And no, it's not going to hurt me more than it hurts you. No, it's not. I'm not going to lie. This is going to hurt you a lot more than it hurts me. And you earned this. You're getting a vigorous spanking because you've been a bad girl. Okay, first of all, get some therapy. <laughs> Second of all, uh, this is not just the creepy fantasizing of a disgraced TV personality with uh, a mommy issues you can see from space or one of those weird right-wing podcasts. He said that on a national stage as part of the Republican presidential campaign, warming up for a man whom a jury of his peers found liable for sexual assault after he defamed the woman who said that Donald Trump raped her in a dressing room. The Republican Party is now very much explicitly running on a campaign of male dominion. Trump's your daddy. Well, last I checked, we're all adults here. And he stands ready to put all the nasty women, as he calls them, in their place. The idea that this overt sexism is a viable electoral strategy has gained a lot of currency lately. Pollster John Della Volpe writing about it in the New York Times this week, saying, aware that boasting about killing Roe v. Wade drove away young women, Mr. Trump zeroed in on capturing a larger share of the young male vote. His playbook, a masterclass in bro whispering. Della Volpe cites Trump's embrace of cryptocurrency, along with his decision to give a prime speaking spot of the Republican National Convention to UFC President Dana White, who, of course, was infamously videotaped slapping his wife in 2022. Just as journalists once obsessed over the white working class, they're now focusing on the anxieties, the political agency of, of men, particularly young men. Republicans were capitalizing on this well before Kamala Harris entered the race. You think back to January, when Trump was facing that primary challenge from Nikki Haley, and his disapproval ratings among women became a campaign issue. And far-right Congressman Matt Gates, one of Trump's biggest cheerleaders, he's the one who's being investigated by the Ethics Committee uh, for possibly having sex with an underage sex worker told conservatives to trust the process because it was all baked in. For every Karen we lose, there's a there's a Julio and a Jamal ready to sign up for the MAGA movement, and that abodes well for our ability to be more diverse and to be more durable as we head into not only the rest of the primary contests, but also the general election. A certain far-right mind alienating women makes them more diverse because they think it will peel off votes from black and Latino men. It's cynical. It's gross. I think it's pretty condescending. What are they going to do to sell Donald Trump? Right? This is the man who bragged about ending Roe v. Wade because he did end it, who has dozens of sexual assault allegations, including a new one this week from a woman who says Trump groped her after, guess who? Jeffrey Epstein, Trump's buddy of all people, introduced them, and that Trump groped her as he looked at Jeffrey Epstein and the two men were exchanging smiles. That guy. This is the man who was convicted of 34 felonies in a New York court after paying an adult film actress to stop from divulging his extramarital relations with her while his wife was home with their newborn child. Misogyny has been central to Trump's identity and in a weird way to his political appeal. I mean, let's be clear, there really is a constituency for this, um, I guess, 14-year-old boy's idea of what manhood is or for grown men that are in a state of suspended animation. But also, I think it's pretty repulsive to large swaths of the electorate, especially women, obviously. A new UMass Amherst poll shows 50% of women prefer Kamala Harris to just 43% for Donald Trump. 
Her advantage among young voters is even greater. A new NBC poll of Gen Z voters shows her winning young women over Trump by a whopping 33 percent, while her advantage among young men is only 2 percent. It's their 31-point gap. Joining me now is Ian Sams, senior spokesman for the Harris campaign. Um, Ian, let me ask about this sort of gender gap that we're seeing in poll after poll. Is the campaign concerned about outreach to, to men, particularly young men, where, where there's, there's such an enormous gap, according to some of the polling we're seeing? Well, thanks for having me. No, I think that we're seeing uh, voters in the late stage of this campaign gravitate toward the vice president. I think you just showed a little bit uh, of the dynamic that's at play, where Donald Trump is poised to lose women by a historic margin. He's poised to lose college-educated women by an even larger historic margin. And you know what? I think that there's an underfocused uh, point on this issue of the gender dynamic in this race. You know, men across this country are pretty repulsed by what Donald Trump did as president. We're going tomorrow, the vice president is going tomorrow to Texas, uh, which is really ground zero of the consequences of some of the extreme abortion bans that we've seen that Donald Trump has helped make possible. And she's going to talk about the importance of this issue, which is one of the most important issues in this election. It is one of the most motivating issues. There's a recent NBC poll, for example, that you guys had at your network showing that it was the most important issue to voters in this election of all issues. And she's going to talk about the consequences of this. And, and this week, for example, we, we have a new ad on the air, features the tragic story of a woman named Andrea who is from Texas and who will be with the vice president tomorrow, and her husband, who she had a miscarriage and she was she had horrible surgery and she's unable to have kids again and they're heartbroken by it that's a real man that's a real man standing with his wife saying this is tragic and you're seeing stories like that across this country of men who are seeing the consequences of donald trump's actions and are motivated to vote to protect their own freedoms to protect the freedoms of their spouses and their daughters and their family members and so i think that in a couple of weeks when voters come to the table and make their final choice of who they're gonna go vote for. You know, this dynamic of, of the gender gap is really gonna reflect poorly on Donald Trump. He's gonna lose this race because he's losing voters and isolating them because of the consequences of his behavior. And it is something that an appearance on a podcast that his staff had to tell him existed is not uh, going to fix. Uh, and, and the way that they have doubled down on their own base, you see the really weird clip from Tucker Carlson that you just showed. You know, that's intended only to play with their own very narrow base. And the more they spend their time talking to that segment of the electorate, the more unappealing they become to the rest of the electorate. And so, you know, we're very confident about the dynamics that are playing out right now. We're confident that voters, as they make up their mind, are seeing the choice between these two candidates, the division, and frankly, the weirdness of Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris, who's trying to be a president for all Americans and actually focused on the real issues that they care about. Uh, you, you mentioned podcasts, and, and uh, Donald Trump is going to be on Joe Rogan's podcast, I think, tomorrow. That's taping in Austin. Um, the vice president now, she'll be on Shannon Sharp's uh, Club Shay Shay uh, uh, podcast, which is uh, always, always entertaining. Was, can I ask you about Rogan? Was there a Rogan invite to the vice president that was turned down? Is it something you would, you would consider doing? doing, given the, the size of that audience, and given that a lot of the folks that Trump seems to be targeting might be listening to that? Well, yeah, I think that the vice president's happy to go anywhere and, and any place to talk to a broad segment of the country. We talked with uh, Rogan and his team about the podcast. Um, unfortunately, it isn't going to work out right now uh, because of the scheduling of this, this period of the campaign. But, you know, she's taking her message to these huge platform uh, audiences, even like Club Shay Shay, like you just talked about. She was yep. able to sit down with Shannon Sharp today. And so she's happy to go into these places and share her message. And, and I think that it's, it's reaching people who aren't really invested in the political process. Donald Trump with Joe Rogan, that's going to be an interesting thing to watch. <laughs> It will be. Final question for you, Ian. Uh, Donald Trump has been very annoyed by your appearances on Fox, and he said he was going to go talk to Rupert Murdoch about it. Have you been back on Fox since they had that conversation? 